Brain. Brain is often considered the most complex thing in the universe. Think of it as the airplane's cockpit, where the pilots work to control the body. In the same way, the brain is the core of the entire central nervous system and is responsible for processing every single aspect of the body, including our nerve impulses, emotions, and thoughts. The brain is an absolute energy user, taking up almost 25% of the body's energy, despite making up less than 5% of the total weight. And in cases of sickness or danger, it will do anything, and I mean anything, to save itself, even at the expense of other body parts. The brain is divided into the right and left cerebral hemispheres. It also has three main parts, the cerebrum, the cerebellum, and the brainstem. As the largest part of the brain, the cerebrum is responsible for coordinating movement and regulating temperature. The cerebellum helps with balance, and the brainstem controls the basic functions of life, including consciousness, breathing, and sleep. Without the brain, the entire body ceases to function, because an organ won't send signals to the other systems to make them work. Even something as simple as breathing relies on the brain. Heart. If the brain is the body's cockpit or control center, the heart is the body's engine. Just like a ship or an airplane can't function without an engine, the body won't function correctly without a heart because it is responsible for pumping blood to the rest of the body. The heart comprises two upper chambers called atria and two lower chambers called ventricles. What happens is that blood flows into the right atrium from the veins and flows into the right ventricle. Blood flows into the pulmonary artery to reach the lungs, putting oxygen into the blood. The oxygen-rich blood will travel through the pulmonary veins to reach the left atrium and the left ventricle before it gets pumped through an artery into different body parts. From there, it becomes a rinse and repeat process, allowing the blood to return to the heart through the right atrium to get its oxygen dose before being redistributed back to the rest of the body. Lungs. The heart may be the engine that pumps blood into the rest of the body. The lungs inject fuel into the engine. They extract oxygen from inhaled air and then oxygenate the blood that flows from the heart and into the rest of the body. The lungs are essential for ensuring the other parts of the body get the oxygen they need. Without the lungs, our blood won't be able to carry oxygen to the body. This can potentially lead to organ damage and failure. A person's lungs also have a surface area for gas exchange that's the size of a tennis court, yet they are still small enough to fit in a person's chest. Liver. Liver's main function is to convert nutrients that the body needs to function. The liver is also responsible for filtering blood coming from the digestive tract. Aside from that, the liver also has other important functions, including bile production for digestion, protein production for blood clotting, helping the body filter out toxic substances, and helping the body's immune system. The liver is also a powerful organ that can heal itself back to its original size even if 75% were cut out. And because the liver's functions are related to blood filtering, it contains almost 20% of all blood in the body. Kidneys Kidneys are a pair of bean-shaped organs that can be found just above the hips, approaching the person's back. When blood flows into the kidneys, they filter waste into the urine using filtration units, called nephrons. The waste is then washed out of the body through urination, making the kidneys important in removing any harmful waste products in your body. Everyone is born with two kidneys. One is enough to filter enough blood to keep the entire body running normally. This explains why a lot of people donate one of their kidneys. Spleen Spleen is an organ found in the upper part of the belly. Its major role is to protect the body by removing older blood cells and other foreign objects from the bloodstream. Basically, the spleen is similar to your car's air filtration system, which filters foreign substances and harmful fumes from getting into your vehicle. Instead, the spleen removes old and damaged cells and ensures that only healthy blood circulates in your body. Gallbladder Gallbladder is a small pear-shaped organ found in the upper quadrant of the abdomen, just next to the liver. While it isn't a vital organ, the gallbladder works together with the liver. It is responsible for storing and releasing the bile that the liver produces. Bile is a substance the body produces to help digestion because it can break down fats. However, an unhealthy person may develop gallstones that can block the gallbladder. On top of causing severe pain, this can interfere with the person's digestion and even with the functions of the liver.
Pancreas Pancreas is located in the upper left portion of the abdomen and plays roles as both an exocrine gland and an endocrine gland. An exocrine gland secretes hormones into the ducts, while an endocrine gland secretes hormones into the blood vessels. As an exocrine gland, the pancreas produces the enzymes needed for food digestion. Meanwhile, as an endocrine gland, the pancreas produces and releases insulin, which enables glucose in the blood to be used for energy. This makes it important in regulating blood sugar and preventing diabetes. Stomach Stomach is an organ at the top of the abdomen, responsible for breaking down and digesting food. Within the stomach are enzymes that digest food. An example is pepsin, which breaks down proteins and converts them into amino acids, which are the building blocks of the proteins that the body produces. The stomach also stores chyme, which is food mixed with stomach liquids. Chyme stays in the stomach until it moves to the intestines. The stomach constantly expands and shrinks depending on the food the person intakes. For example, eating a massive meal in the morning will allow the stomach to expand to accommodate more food later in the day. That's why those with big appetites tend to have bigger stomachs that have already stretched beyond the normal size. However, the size of the stomach is unrelated to the person's weight. So even if a fat person loses weight, the stomach will not shrink to accommodate the body's new weight. Intestines Intestines comprise two different intestines, the small intestine and the large intestine. These organs are tubes that filter waste, absorb water, and digest food. Food that has already been partially digested passes through the small intestine. Contrary to popular belief, digestion and absorption of food don't mostly happen in the stomach. Instead, most of it happens in the small intestine. The stomach is primarily responsible for breaking down and storing food before passing it to the small intestine. After food gets digested and broken down by the small intestine, it becomes feces, or poop, which travels through the large intestine. The poop stops at the rectum before it gets ejected from the body through the anus, also known as the butthole. Skin Skin is the largest organ in the body, because almost all of the body, except for the external cavities, is covered by skin. The skin forms part of the integumentary system, including nails, fat, and hair. The role of the integumentary system is to regulate body temperature, protect it from external dangers, and produce vitamin D. The skin is composed of three layers, which include the following. The epidermis, which is the outermost layer of the skin, the dermis, which is the middle layer of the skin, and the subcutaneous fat is the skin's deepest part. People from different parts of the world have different skin colors because of melanin, a substance that the skin produces to help protect the body from the sun's harmful rays. Melanin also darkens the skin, so in parts of the world where the sun shines brighter, people have darker skin to protect their bodies from the sun. Eyes As a sensory organ, the eyes are primarily responsible for vision. They say that the eyes are the window to a person's soul, but it's linked to the brain instead, because there is a direct correlation between the two organs. The eyes capture visible light and allow it to pass through the eyes different components. The light is then processed and sent to the brain, which interprets the information and converts it into vision. This is why the body can't see anything whenever there's little to no visible light available for the eyes to capture. From the day a person is born until death, the eyes remain the same size and will never grow or shrink. Ears Ears are sensory organs that are responsible for detecting sound by making use of sound waves that pass through the ear canal and are sent to the brain for processing. But the ears are also responsible for maintaining balance because deep within the ears is a system that's connected to the eyes and the muscles. Without the ears, the person will lose their balance and be less coordinated with their movements. A less known fact is that ears are also self-cleaning. Some people tend to try to clean out earwax, but the presence of earwax is a sign that the ears are doing a good job at cleaning themselves and in keeping the ears moisturized. So think twice about using Q-tips to clean out earwax. Tongue Tongue is both a sensory and a muscular organ because it has several purposes. While the tongue is known to aid in tasting food through the taste buds and sends the information to the brain, it is also an organ that aids digestion, speaking, and breathing. The tongue works in conjunction with the mouth by moving around while the mouth is chewing, making it easier for the food to get swallowed. 
It is also responsible for helping the mouth produce different sounds and pronouncing certain words. Finally, the tongue aids breathing by keeping the mouth's airway open. Reproductive organs. Male and female bodies have different reproductive organs that form part of large reproductive systems. For males, the testes are the main reproductive organs. As for the females, the ovaries are considered the most vital for reproduction. Also known as the testicles, the testes are organs found in a pouch of skin called the scrotum. Basically, these are the balls. The role of the testes is to produce sperm and a hormone called testosterone. This gives men the usual large and bulky muscles, anger issues, etc. Meanwhile, the ovaries are found on either side of the female's uterus. The main role of the ovaries is to produce eggs for fertilization and the hormones estrogen and progesterone. Without the ovaries, the female body cannot get pregnant and will experience hormonal imbalance.